All right, what's up, folks? Welcome to a new little mix. We're going to just play cassettes tonight. And we're going to start off with one of my favorites of all time. And if they're not one of your favorites, too, you might be watching the wrong channel. I'm just saying that because this band has influenced a lot of the bands I've covered, and I love this shit. I forgot to press the rewind button. Ay. But, yeah. Dead Infection, Chapter of Accidents. Fucking A. I can curse after a minute. It's weird. YouTube has the weirdest rules ever. What the fuck? There we go. What the? <laughs> Hold on. It's like you're not gonna have a nice live stream because reasons. But, uh, I'll wait for more people. To come to let you folks know, uh, we finally have the official Accursed Womb CDs in for uh, Hymns of Death and Misery, although the title is wrong. I mean, it's, it's Hymns of Misery and Death, but like the title has been Hymns of Death and Misery for the past two presses. So, I guess it's uh, Hymns of Death and Misery now, but the actual title is Hymns of Misery and Death. So, if you have the first cassette press, you actually have the official tape title. Well, you actually have the compilation title, because that's the real name. I don't know how it got mixed up, but somehow it did. But come on, it's time for Chapter of Accidents. From the Animatical Depths. Enjoy ya. thought it was a posthumous like Bud Dwyer autopsy photo for some reason but I'm probably wrong I'm just guessing but guessing's fun because I don't have the internet in front of me aside from this so you know yeah, a nice bootleg of a chapter of accidents. This is not what I would call a boof leg. This is, you know, a real good bootleg. It sounds really nice. And uh, you wouldn't really know until you open it, and then it's like, oh, you know, it's 
one of those, but yeah, it, it's good and all, and you know, rest in power to uh, Cyan. Every time I open a Dead Infection release, I'm always reminded, like, oh yeah, like, you know, that dude's not around anymore. And, you know, I meant to do this earlier. I'm sure the stream will post eventually, but it went on for three hours. Tonight's video goes out to Scott Hall, the bad guy. If you don't know Scott Hall, a.k.a. Razor Ramon. Rest in power. Um, just out of respect, I'm going to have a three-minute, uh, three-second moment of silence for Scott Hall. You can participate if you want, but to me, Scott Hall was the reason I liked heels in professional wrestling. Scott Hall meant a lot to me growing up as a wrestling fan. I was so happy when I saw him get his life back together. And I've never seen a pro wrestler turn down the opportunity to break a light tube over another pro wrestler's head. But he's that nice of a guy that he handed the light tube back off to, uh, I don't remember who was in the match, but, you know, it breaks my heart that Scott Hall has passed, but just three second moment of silence starting now. All right, so this all goes out to the bad guy, Scott Hall. Rest in power, brother. Oh, you gotta do the too sweet sign. Come on. And also, fuck Hulk Hogan. If you had the displeasure of watching his farewell speech, he actually had the nerve to bring up Hulkamania while talking about Scott Hall. Like how Hulkamania will never die while talking about Scott Hall during a fucking eulogy. You egotistical orange man. Like, and he's not even a good person. Like, Hulk Hogan cheated on his wife. He's a racist scumbag. Like, fuck Hawk Hogan. I'm sorry, but seriously, fuck Hawk Hogan. But after you die, that's what I meant posthumously. Like, maybe a couple hours after he died, because you just blowed up. Like, when you die, I mean, I don't want to get, it's, it's gnarly. I know people are eating dinner and stuff. I, I don't want to really get into... You know, what happens to your body when you die, but, you know, it is gnarly, like, but you do get bloated really, really fast. I, I know that's like, it's just something that happens. So, you never know. It, it could, it could be, but I'm just, that it, it's, no pun intended, a shot in the dark. Wah, wah, wah. But... I got this in the mail today from Encirclement. This is their debut full length, and it is gnarly. I fucking dig it, because this is my shit, but this is some raw fucking bestial black death on Expansion Abyss. This is DIY, and... You know what's not DIY? The Accursed Womb CDs. I don't have one on hand because they just came in today. But that shit, yo, they are so nice. Like, I checked out the video I got sent, like, of what the layout looks like. You get, like, an eight-page booklet. Yo, it's legit. Like, it's super nice. Good sound quality. If you missed out on the cassette, this is your last, like, legit, we're not reissuing this again. 
this is your last chance to get the demo shit. Unless we eventually do the demo itself on vinyl, but I doubt that. So, I would... If you have any interest in a cursed wound, the promo has an unreleased uh, demo version of a Crown of Piss track. I know that. We didn't get to uh, finish the uh, Crown of Piss promo, or that would have made it onto the CD also. But you know, it, it is what like we were on a we had a time limit and stuff, but. I'm happy with it. It turned out great, and everything went full circle. Be oh, I don't have, I don't have the U.S. version. But if you have the U.S. version of the cassette, it's on that Rona yellow, and we made sure that the CD cover is Rona yellow. So everything goes full circle. But this is some raw. Savage Bastille Black Death from Los Angeles. Encirclement. Expansion Abyss Records. Spectral voice for real, Brian. Where'd you, where'd you go? There's a new spectral voice, like full length, or is it the the the, the split they were supposed to do? Damn it! Well, answer me if you can. about the split that was supposed to happen. Thank <laughs> you. 
guys hail from Los Angeles. And really nice cassette on Expansion Abyss. Encirclement. And the CD is DIY. <clears throat> it's sealed and has like this weird handprint on it. I don't know if it's there on purpose. It's kind of strange. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. You see that handprint? What the hell is that? See it? Right, like right there. I don't know what the hell. It's like wax. It feels like wax. But I don't know what the hell that is. Like weirded me out at first. I was like, what the hell is that? But uh folks want some death metal demos. Uh you want some black metal. Cause if I do things my way, uh Um, I'm not sure actually. <laughs> what things uh I would get a copyright if I did that. I gotta be careful about that shit. Um, yeah. Can't go wrong here. And in case you folks in the UK, I mean, in uh, Europe and stuff, thought you missed out on this, Extremely Rotten's got the CDs and cassettes in stock. Necropsy Odor, Tales from the Tepa Cavity. Mm -hmm. Again, if you've been watching the channel recently, I've been obsessed with this demo. It's just amazing filth from members of Mephetic Corpse, Fratricide, just gnarly shit. <laughs>
when you stumble across the demo tape like this in the wild, first, you have to realize that what you're holding in your hands is potentially something that maybe in 20 years is going to properly reflect this time period in death metal's history. So I do feel as if if you're able to get a copy physically, like even if you want to wait for the 7 inch, this is something I feel like needs to be secured properly in a physical way, but that's just my opinion. I mean, uh, come on, when 625 Thrash puts their name on your fucking demo tape, like, you're doing something right and, like, extremely rotten taking care of Europe. Yeah, it's an amazing release, Tales from the Tepe Cavity. It's just one of those demos, and trust me, once this is gone, it's, you know, gonna be one of those, like, 50 plus dollar cassette tapes so just a heads up like I would go get this now before it's too late like Extremely Rotten has the CDs cassettes Head Split has the cassettes and I think uh, 625 Thrash might even have the European cassettes somebody told me but I don't know if that's true honestly <laughs> Uh, for some reason, they didn't really seem to know if they were right or not. It was kind of a weird conversation. But, uh, anyways, back to what I was going to put on next. Because I wanted to keep it nasty. And I grabbed the wrong... Don't you hate when bands have the same name? Like, you would think, like... You know, especially when it comes to the term putrid, like, it's just, well, I don't know. <laughs> like, they're different names, but they're close enough to where I, I mixed it up pretty easy right there. Unless, if I wouldn't have recognized the cover, I, I would have probably screwed up. But this is a great demo. I want to keep, uh... The head split tapes going. I was gonna just do a red shell night, but I mean we could have done that, but I just you know what I probably should have done that. That would have been fun. Cause then I could have got everything ready in advance and stuff. But um uh, Yeah, I'm just testing out this you know shit, having fun with it. So, this is Putridarium, and, you know, simple title, like Putrefaction 21, you know exactly what you're getting here. If you don't, then you probably don't listen to Death Metal. I mean, just look at that cover. Look at that logo. You know exactly what this is. And it's exactly as good as you think it's going to be. That's all I can say about putrid arium. Putrid arium. Putrid arium. Yes.
have to find it. tape on head split grimy 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 death metal oozes like a nice pop zip out of your speakers and into your brain and I love it it's just one of those demos that you know 
All right, now I know I got a crematory stench uh, request, but I'm sorry, but I need some evil in my life right now, and I saw this from a distance, and I was just like, you know what? I need some of this in my life. And if you don't know what this tape is, I just grabbed, this is probably the 50th time this cover artwork has been used, but it doesn't matter because the tunes that exist within from Mortem with Deninos Necromantis. Oh shit. This is one of those banger of the records that I just love to play whenever I like <laughs> am reminded that I have it. Like I always forget that this isn't cyanide. Because like, I, I have cyanide, uh, the dying truth, but I don't have it on uh, cassette, I have it on vinyl. But for some reason, my brain, when I, whenever I see that, I just automatically think cyanide. I don't know, it's just one of those association things. Like whenever, as I know a lot of bands have used this painting, I'm pretty sure this is The Last Judgment, is the name of this painting. I could be wrong. I'll check real fast on the Mortem J card. Yeah, front cover, Last Judgment. That's what I thought. But this is a little bit later in their career, and hey, what's up? But this is, I, I, I don't know, I love this release, and I hope you folks do too. It's speedy, it's evil, it's fun, and then we can play some crematory stench. All right. Ow.
Now, Mortem is another one of those bands where there's about probably 85 Mortems. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, probably in existence worldwide. There's so many, but this is the uh, South American Mortem. Just for your information. And I highly recommend checking out some of their earlier stuff. It's just really, really sick, and I just think you folks will definitely enjoy the ripping evil. Because, like, that's what it, like, actually, like, it kind of reminds me a little bit of superstition, but, like, I don't know. It has this South American, like, sarcophago, just, like, vibe, kind of. But, again, before Crematory Stench, I was just thinking, I really want to play something gross. And that's a uh, posthumous... Regurgitation. Exhumation of cadavers for research and consumption. This is a Till Faith Records version. Again, it's whatever, but let's get gross. Sorry if you don't have your barf bag. Hails Eternal Rock Rules.
You know what? I'm sorry. I'll play crematory stench for a donation. <laughs> We're gonna keep it filthy. Uh, I just, I'm in the mood right now for some gore. But I will play. I'll play some crematory stench for a donation. But yeah, otherwise prepare for some more board grind. And this time we're gonna travel to Japan, but it is not pharmacist. It's another just killer Japanese uh, gore grind band because they seem to put out tons of amazing bands. They always have. I mean, Japanese hardcore had a very big influence on like grindcore with just like their style of speedy hardcore but uh this is maggot maggotafree or maggotography however yeah that's how you say it <laughs> maggotography but this is a really badass compilation i love it but we're just gonna play a few more songs and then I'm gonna have to call it a night. I made myself a promise, but if that gets broken, I will stick around. But until then, I'll bring you some filth. Maggot with maggot to maggot to graphy. I don't know why that's so hard to say. It shouldn't be, but killer Japanese gore grind for fans of um gore grind on Grindfather Productions, who always seem to put out really gnarly shit. And, like, this is, like, I think 49 songs total? Yeah. 49 songs total. And, like, you get the rehearsal and demo from 2001. 
you get all the goods here. In my opinion, I mean, like, it's mostly, like, split songs, but, like, just the fact you get, like, the demo tapes and shit, like, fucking A. Because that's the stuff, most of the time, when it comes to gore grind, that's the best shit. It really is, like, I mean, go listen to Regurgitation, uh, Regurgitate, for example. Like, their demo is, like, on the whole entire other level. As much as I love Deviant, and, like, even Carnivorous Erection, there's just something about that demo that is, like, so, like, legitimately, it sounds like just the angriest shit ever. And... I just love it. There's something about it that's just... Like, from the opening sample, it, it's just... It's a great slab of, of gore grind. And it always has been. Like, that's been a favorite of mine since, like... Right after I graduated and started, like, listening to gore grind. I mean, fuck. I have some kind of funny stories. But, uh, uh, a buddy of mine, um, secured a cock and ball torture CD before, and, uh, yeah, we never really realized it was just a bunch of corn riffs with gore grind vocals. Because that, because seriously, that's all it is. It's kind of terrible. Yeah, CBT is definitely kind of boof when it comes to gore grind. Like, it's just not my thing. Like, when I was 19, like I said, and, like, was first kind of getting my, like, feet wet with gore grind. Like, I had friends in Triple X Maniac at the time and stuff like that. And, you know, like, it, it was kind of always just... A tongue-in-cheek type type thing nobody took gore grind seriously and that's why I really love this next band and this all got reissued European like I'm really hoping Dark Descent will get some 12 inches cuz I'm of corpse talking about miasmic necrosis and Apex Profane, oh my, on Graceless Recordings, but now on the Mighty Extremely Rotten Productions. And MSUO did the vinyl on Friday, I think. I know the colored copies are sold out, but I'm hoping Dark Descent gets copies. The Extremely Rotten CD has more photos. It looks so fucking cool. I really need to get this on vinyl. I, I listen to this tape way too much not to get it on vinyl. Like, Miasmic Necrosis is... Wow. Like, I don't know what else to say, honestly, besides wow. Like, this is everything I want from, like, just a band, period. This and, like, Melting Rot, that's, like, yeah. And probably also, I'd say, like, Impure. If you were to, like, throw all those bands together, like, it would just be this, the most ultimate shit. I can't even imagine, but, yeah. Let's get into it. This is already a modern gore grind classic.
press. It's definitely not new though. I think this is like 2019, honestly. Like I've, I've had this for about a year now and I know I missed the LP. I think it's actually a 2020 release. It's like all the, like this is the first press on Graceless Recordings, cassette wise. And uh, I forget who did the vinyl. Yeah, it, it is 2020, not 2019. That's my bad. Kind of what this is. Like, it's pretty sick. I'm probably missing cerebral rot in Philly, and I am not happy about it. But the venue has not hit me back yet about a place for me to be sit. I was actually about to put some Waco Jesus on, but, uh,. I watched one of Justin's videos and he was talking about them, so I was like, oh man, that means everybody's gonna go look them up. But uh, I think he might have actually brought this record up, or this other kid did. Because I love this band, but I had never heard of them until recently. The cover art is very 90s and it's very hip-hop looking but trust me this is so heavy and that's hidden pride brutal advice on uh burning dogma records like there's their actual logo this is straight up just like some of them i thought that was lord worm actually it's not but this is some of the heaviest Canadian death metal I heard, like, especially from 1996. 1996 is the year Cryptopsy changed death metal forever with None So Vile. Because seriously, it really got death metal out of this slump of creativity and kind of expanded what was possible like when it came to musicianship and stuff cryptopsy was on a whole new level than like as much as i love immolation cryptopsy was just doing something a little bit different than everybody else in 1996 but hidden pride like, this is one of those releases, again, I would walk right past this in a record store. I think, even, I think Brutal Truth did a cover like this, but I just might be imagining that. But for some reason, I, I don't know, I swear, 
I'm sure some hip hop group though did a parental advisory mock up cover, but uh, yeah, this randomly came with a corpse crystal package and just like blew my mind. I was like, what? Like, what is this? I didn't. I never heard of this band, and yeah, I just instantly like fell in love with this. So I'd like to share. A little bit of it with you. I think they're from, uh, yeah, Montreal, Quebec. This was recorded late 1996. Like I said, hence the cover. Enjoy. Hidden pride, brutal advice. Oh. Now, like again, I would have walked right past this in a record store. And I'd be kicking myself in the ass later for doing so. Because this fucking rules. If you like brutal death metal. If you don't, then, yeah, you're probably not going to dig this. Because it's straight up just, you know, absolutely crushing. But, like, when they want to be, they can be technical. But, like, I just like them when they're just straight up punishing. And I found that instantly enjoyable. And I want to put something on I haven't put on in a minute. It, it just, like, popped in my head out of nowhere. Which is kind of gross, but, like, it's all good. <laughs> but when you name your band this, you're going all in. 
And I just, I have to show the cover art first because it, to me it's brilliant. Like, honestly, I, I think it's brilliant. But, uh, again, this is some more Japanese gore, but, uh, diarrhea. And if you don't know what this is a mock-up of, uh, you're watching the wrong channel. I mean, how brilliant is that? And look, you have the death head, you have the carcass head, and you have Helga's head from Repulsion. Well, like, come on. That's awesome. OG Autopsy, Severed Survival, probably the best knockoff ever. Anal Torture Grind by Diarrhea. So, this is on a nice poop brown shell, as you would expect from a band called Diarrhea. But head split records, it's good shit, trust me. Anal torture grind. Wonderful cover art. Head Split still has copies, but if you live in Japan, I think Obliteration Records put this out. But yeah, on a nice brown turd shell. But just the cover mock-up alone, I think is just brilliant. It's gross and brilliant at the same time. Kind of everything you could ask for from like a gore grind release. A sense of humor and, you know, some pure filth. And speaking of which, I want some pure filth. And this band right here I'm about to put on. Again, it's another head split release. I love this. It's just one of those that... I just could listen to constantly. And it never would get old. It's just one of those. Enjoy.
ischemic necrosis. Not to be confused with miasmic necrosis. They're both equally awesome though. But this has 39 tracks of gore. And speaking of gore, I have a treat. And this is a rare this is a rare one. And this is one that I listen to way more than I do the full length version of this release. And that's Lord Gore, the Cronenberg promo. I absolutely love this promo. I don't know why. There's just something about it that just makes it stand out from the full length. I don't I, I can't put my finger on it, but there's just something about Lord Gore. And if you don't know, well, now I hope you know. Write this down, kids. Lord Gore. snag one of these I hope you still listen to it cuz I listen to mine and that is Lord Gore Cronenberg promo head split I know they did a bunch of different shell variants have to end here because what's the best nation a donation because uh, I did switch accounts so like legitimately every dollar I can just check to make sure it actually went through but 
If not, it's no big deal. But this next release, I can't stress this enough. I'm pretty sure they have a bundle deal with this. And if they don't, the German version is sold out that has both demos together. I'm talking about Massacred Brutal Murder. Three track demo. And Massacre with the Mighty Skull Slayer, which has five tracks. You put the both together and you have a full length album, pretty much. By the best mortician worship band I have ever heard. I'm sorry, Will and Roger, but I'm glad this guy decided to keep doing this project. Because it's honestly great. Massacred Skull Slayer. This track, I think, is Skull Slayer, but let me make sure. Yep. Legit best mortician worship ever. So good. And you know I have to put on Brutal Murder while I'm here. Because it's seriously, when it comes to mortician worship, this is the best. Incest cassettes, but available through Corpse Gristle. Trust me, these are going to sell out, and I would get one before it's too late. But I would get both of these demos at the same time, because it's really worth it, honestly, to get them both. Like, this is five tracks, this is three. Like I said, just put them together. It's a full length, pretty much. Not by mortician standards, but just pretend it's like, you know, the Mortal Massacre EP or something, you know? Because there is a German version of this that has both demos on one. And as soon as I did a video on Skull Slayer, <laughs> Skull Slayer that shit sold out, like, instantly. 
But this is Brutal Murder. Same band, Massacred. comes to mortician worship nobody does it better than massacred from Argentina Argentina and no longer broken up so expect more mortician worship in the near future I'm extremely excited because I love these two demos more than I like like, legitimately, I like these two demos way more than I like Darkest Day of Horror and, like, Reanimated Dead Flesh. Like, I'm being dead serious. I'd rather listen to these two demos. No offense, but, like, it's just... To me, it's, like... You know, it's dialed. Like, I've never heard a mortician worship band that dialed in like to the actual like kind of I, I would say honestly like like house by the cemetery ish it's just I don't know I, I like it a lot and that's all that really matters but I'm just gonna do one more because it's almost 90 minutes and I just made myself a little rule I do appreciate everybody chilling and shit. Um, let me just, I kind of wanted to go full circle and put on another band that uh, Necropsy Odor kids are in. But I was wondering real fast if anybody has any questions or anything, but I'm gonna put something else on that's kind of hard to find these days. I don't know what happened to this band. But Mike from Devourment, well, ex-Devourment, did the cover art. I'm talking about Torso, Demonic Vomiting. MSUO did the cassette. And this is, like, absolutely top-shelf death metal. Recorded on an analog 4-track, but... I have no idea what happened to this band after, like, Ken's Death Metal Crypt did the layout, so maybe Ken knows. But, uh, holy shit, this rules so much. And 
I'm gonna have to end here unless somebody has a donation or something. We'll keep going. I missed the pre-order and I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to get this for you folks. This seems to be 
still one of my favorite demos. I mean, that torso demo is great, but so is... Well, I, I would call this an EP, actually, because the band already had a demo, a 7-inch, and then this bad boy came out with a very distinctly different sound, which was a lot more Wendigang-esque. And I'm talking about the UK's Crypt Worm. Reeking gunk of abhorrence. No, I did not get the vinyl. I wish I did. I wish I would have got the cassette or something, but nope. No US distros had it or anything. And yeah. Sorry, but that's life. But I love this tape. And yeah, reeking gunk of abhorrence. Enjoy.
one more. I know I keep saying that, but I really do just want to play one more. Because I broke my own rule, but hey, I was having fun. Crypt Worm, Reeking Gunk of Abhorrence. I really wish I would have got the full length, but I tried. I mean, maybe Dark Descent will get some copies and we'll get lucky. But for now, we're going to end with one of my favorite demos of all time. And I'm going to be fancy schmancy and make it look nice. Maybe I'll get a donation, maybe I won't, but we'll get to enjoy some tunes real fast. Enjoy the filth.
for hanging out and shit. It's cool about the donations. I'm just trying to get this all situated. But I appreciate you hanging out, listening to tunes, and thanks for watching. Peace. But this is why I can't play certain stuff. So, yeah, you know, that's uh, one of the problems. Because if I got, eh, it's hard to explain, but if you have a YouTube channel, you understand why I can't play, like, nuclear blast shit. It, you get these uh, claims and stuff, it's just a pain in the ass. And right now, this is like my only source of income, and I don't even know if it's set up right at the moment. So, I'll find out tomorrow, hopefully. I don't really fucking know. But right now, I need to unfreeze Patreon somehow. I don't know how. That's something I haven't figured out yet, but I did get Google reset up and stuff so I can have access to my account which is awesome, but if I can just get the Patreon set up, then the sooner I can uh, just start getting something I have planned rolling, and it's going to be cool, but uh, yeah, you'll hear about it on uh, the Heavy Hole podcast whenever Will airs the, my episode, he said he'd let me know, but we recorded Tuesday night for three hours. And we had a good conversation, and, uh, yeah. Yeah.